Hi guys, um, so this is Benoit from Raging Heroes. Um, so it's an answer to your questions about the Daughters of the Crucible. So you're asking me what was your inspiration for the Daughter of the Crucible. Um, when we started working on the sisters, on the sisters of the Eternal Mercy Army, um, we wanted to bring something uh, that was not really present, uh, not really there in in that kind of sci-fi night army uh, in general, and that was uh, something related to pulp. Uh, I, um, we we wanted to bring something a little bit um, funny and. Uh, something uh, in the spirit of uh, Quentin Tarantino. Uh, if you if you read about the, the thing we posted about our game projects and stuff like that, there is definitely a tongue-in-cheek feel in what we want to do. So there is as much uh, uh, a dark side to our uh, toughest girl of the galaxy universe as there is something a bit funny and tongue-in-cheek just like Quentin Tarantino would do. And so we thought um, we could do that with girls in armor and everything, but it was not enough. Uh, we, we needed to find characters who would really bring that uh, pulp feel or exploitation movie feel. Um, and so uh, I started working on, on that project knowing that I wanted to have basic nuns with guns but at the same time I wanted to bring something special to them and, and, and really um, uh, give them a, a, a sci-fi feel and something else on top of it. So um, I look in many different directions uh, and of course, uh, the sister army is heavily influenced by Catholic um, culture. Um, so I looked in many directions and uh, after a little time of research, um, it was obvious that one of the good um, axes on which I could work was the Hispanic culture uh, and the way they will tend, this culture will tend to um, represent a Catholic image in a very vivid and very pop way, in, if I can say that. Um, so um, I started looking in the uh, the Day of the Dead thing in 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 Mexico and in Mexican culture and stuff like that and um, I, I, uh, I also had in mind uh, the Romeo plus Juliet movie from Baz Luhrmann who uses that Latino feel uh, and many references to uh, Christian culture uh, in 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 a, in a in a very interesting way, mixing um, Shakespeare and the original text from Shakespeare, and something very modern uh, with uh, the gang culture and and references to uh, uh, pop culture in general. So um, and so this brought me to the Cholas, uh, the, 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 the woman in the Mexican and Latino gang. And uh, those girls were like exactly what I was envisioning for the Daughters of the Crucible. Uh, they, they tend to be very feminine and yet they, they look like you don't, really don't want to mess with them. Uh, so uh, they, 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 they represent what, what we like to do with the TGG in general is that we have very feminine characters, but um, uh, it, not in a way that you could 
say they are oh, they are just pinups or they are just sexy girl now they're, they're they are very powerful and full of personality characters so that that was the uh, this this reference was great um to 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 start working on the daughters of the crucible um so after after looking into that um i i i had a, a very good start with the cholas uh, with the way they um the way they tend to pose the way they uh, do their makeup uh, all that kind of things. It, it was very inspiring. There were a lot of different things and of course their tattoos and the way they will use religious images and mix them with uh, the, the street and the gang culture and it was work working very well because I knew that the, the daughter of the crucible would have a, a fantasy version which would be the daughter of the orphanage and the daughter of the orphanage was in fact one of my very first projects when we started Raging Heroes. I had in mind this group of sisters who would take care of urchins on the streets and um, those little children would be part of the unit um, in, 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 in a way that children has not been represented very much in miniatures like the the standard bearer on the uh, in the in the daughter of the orphanage unit is this group of kids riding a, a, a wooden horse and i think this is something that was never done before in that way so anyway i i knew that uh, um, those uh, the daughter of the crucible and the daughter of the orphanage would be like somewhat the same unit but in sci-fi and in fantasy and and so um uh, i i i mixed the images i already had in mind for the daughter of the of the orphanage with those new references and we started to work on the character and at that time the concept artist we were working with uh, he, he, he catched the, the the reference instantly I mean it, it was really speaking to him and so he started to draw those girls and at the time uh, you're asking me uh, the, um, each donor has their own personality visible with each sculpt where they designed as a whole unit to start with or individuals and then put together in a unit and um, the, uh, the thing that happened at that time was that it was supposed to be just a unit. Uh, I knew that I wanted them to have a lot of character because um, the daughter of the orphanage, the fantasy version, was meant to be some sort of like a diorama. Like the unit would make a little diorama and some of the miniatures would be like little scenes in themselves like Gudrun the, the cook which is in fact the musician of the uh, of the unit and Tim Tam Tom the, the three children riding the 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 wooden horse they are like little scenes in the, in in themselves and I at the beginning I wanted to add more to that um, I had some other ideas for if, if I was to make a, a, a fairly large unit uh, of them. So I had other ideas for the sister interacting with the with the children in in the same way and um, sprinkling those little scenes in in the unit. So uh, at first I thought that the daughters would be like just a regular unit. The daughters of the crucible i mean just like the daughter of the orphanage were uh, but when the the concept started coming in um it was obvious that we had something more than just a unit and so it's at that time that we started to think about the all-star <coughs> unit concept and and the idea be behind that 
it's it's a very Tarantino-esque idea once again, uh, just like in his movie, like in in. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna forget the name. Uh, in Reservoir Dogs, Reservoir Dogs, you've got that band of guy, and each one of them is a hero in his own, but they act like a team. And uh, we thought, okay, since the game we are working on is gonna be very much inspired by that type of movie, uh, it makes a lot of sense to have a unit made of heroes, or in that case, heroines. And so um, that's how we um, decided to, to to work on those girls and to make like a new kind of unit in, in a miniature game, which would be like the A-Team or the Seven Samurais or something like that, you know. Um, and oh, the band in Usual Suspect or whatever. So, um, uh, when when we when we got that idea of the unit we we continued to work on the concept really trying to give them a different feel because most of the time what we do uh, for designing um, it's it's we start with the poses because the poses really gives us the character uh, if you look at many well-known character in in pop culture and movies uh, most of the time you can spot them just by looking at their silhouette and reading their pose like if you think of spider-man he will be crouching in a way that is very unique or uh, if you look at well i don't know superman he will stand with his fist on his hips for example you know that, uh, things like that really create um, the feeling of a character so we, we, ten, we ten, tend to start with the poses and then we add the accessories and everything that makes the character stand out and of course it's not like um, it's a very organic process so sometime it will go faster and the concept artist will have some ideas or will tell him okay you can bring that in or whatever so for example uh, here we say okay we have this chola um, reference and this mexican gang feel that we want to or hispanic gang feel that we want to put in 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 this unit but we can also look into all the Christian culture and how is it represented in uh, in a pop way um, and so like on statues or illustrations or whatever and so you 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 end up with having those crowns of roses or crowns of thorns or anything like that and then you 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 take some references like the the rosaries that we use to link the guns and oh also there was one of the one of the inspiration here was uh this movie with i think it was with christian bale and i'm not sure i remember it's the name of the movie suddenly um but uh, it, it, it was, uh, uh, was it equi Equilibrium, maybe, um, that came out uh, uh, after Matrix. And there was, there were, in, in that movie, the, the characters would be fighting uh, with guns, but doing some sort of Kung Fu at the same time. And we thought, okay, we could have something a bit like this with the daughters. They could have those guns linked with the rosary and they could either fire with the gun or use them as some sort of flails by just grabbing the rosary and spinning the spinning it so that the gun will act like some sort of uh, 
mace or whatever and you could imagine very easily a, 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 a fighting style based on that like a very close range gun slash end-to-end uh, fighting style and um, and the idea was that those girls would would live on the streets and they had become who they are now because they have been forgotten by their uh, hier hierarchy either because they live on a faraway planet or uh, because uh, as you'll learn if you play with our TGG game with our toughest girl of the galaxy game um, the daughters uh, the, no, the sisters, sorry, the sister of the Eternal Mercy has been somewhat split between the people who live on the streets and who keep on fighting for the, the core values uh, of protecting the weak and uh, bringing justice and so on. And the people who now are in power and are more into politics and um, and and personal interest than uh, the original values of the sisters. So, um, so they, they, those those girls, the daughters of the Crucible, they, they 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 are left alone to defend themselves and defend the poor and and the weak on the streets. And so they had to find their way of dealing with that. So at first they were not necessarily warriors, uh, but they were more like, um, uh, um, well, like regular nuns. Uh, uh, so you could think of them more as some sort of nurse, nurses or teachers or you know, n not fighters. And so, well, they developed their own ways of fighting and defending themselves. And since they live on the street, most of the, the, the combat they had to get into were close range stuff. And that's how they developed their unique fighting style. Um, so, um, I'm, I'm reading your next question. I think I have answered a big part of it already. Can you explain the design process for one of the daughters of the Crucible? How did you start with a personality idea or an, or an, uh, an ornament idea for the model? How many changes did the model go through from initial idea through draft to sculpting? Um, this is a very good question because it's, it's, it's always a bit different. Um, Usually, what I what I will do is that um, when I have a, 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 a concept, an idea for a unit or for a character, um, like a, like a basic thing, a, a basic idea. Let's say, okay, I want to make a priest character or a warrior or whatever, and. I, I already have a few ideas of how I want to make that. Um, like I told you, I will go and look into references. So here I, I, I went looking in Christian culture and um, and once I find my let's say editorial axis the the, 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 the the stylistic direction i want to take i start to go on pinterest and pin tons of stuff uh like really many 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 images uh as much as i can and it will be either poses that i think would fit the character or ornaments or um faces, facial expressions um, and I really try to go in all direction. I'm not limiting myself like I see a lot of people taking references in other video games or things related to the gaming culture and that's something I try to avoid in fact. Uh, I try to 
I try to get fresh ideas from things outside that. So I will look at sculptures or things from uh, movies or fashion or whatever, plenty of stuff. Uh, sometimes I will be just looking for shapes like uh, so I, I will sometimes even go in uh, looking for architectural stuff. Like this is how we created the backpacks, for example, for the sisters. Um, looking at some cathedral stuff or whatever, uh, and and using that and mixing everything to the, together. So if I'm if I'm working on a specific character, like for example, one of the daughters here. Um, I will I will start from those very basic ideas and then gather tons of references. And when I have all those references, some things will stand out. Like I will, for example, say, "Oh, okay, here I got a face that inspires me." Um, in the sense that this is, this could be a character. Like for example, uh, some sort of. Uh, uh, um, playful expression like she's uh, she's teasing me in the sense of um, uh, uh, will you be good enough to uh, uh, try and beat me you know something like that I don't know if that's the right way to say it but I think you get my point and um, and so this is this can be a very good start like I, I can say okay this this character uh, will be someone who is taunting you uh, and another one so if you look at the daughters here you, know, you you've got many different types of expressions and feel so you've got a few that would be uh, let's let, let me bring up an image of them so I can be more specific so for example if I'm looking at Lupita love she is really like she's playing it cool and she's taunting us okay so this was the start of that character i mean i remember that the concept artist did a drawing that i found nice but uh, it was it was a beautiful girl that's that's uh, all, all she was i could say it's it's not really true to say that it was a bit more than that but it was lacking a little bit of personality so i i saw a face and i think hmm, this one would go perfectly with that character who is moving to toward us walking toward us uh swaying her hips and so she's she's got something provocative and if it if she's provocative here she's she must be like okay um I'm too good for you. I will beat you anytime. Okay, so I wanted to give that feel and at the same time keep the sexiness in her um, and make her look playful. So that's how she came to be. And another one, for example, which is very different, would be Justicia Luz, um, who is, um, well, she, the inspiration is very simple. It came from the Justice, which is blindfolded. And then I took the hand pose with the gun from that movie with Christian Bale, um, where they have that kind of hand pose with their guns because they they all look like priests, and there is some sort of spirituality behind the way they fight, or at least they, it looks like that, you know, like in. Asian martial arts where you, you you just don't have it's not just like fighting style it's it's like a philosophy so this is what I wanted to convey here uh, she's got some sort of depth um, that is very different from Lupita for example and then you've got spooky Pepe who is obviously someone who is not completely there uh, and she's not there because she's having visions and she's some sort of seer and whatever. So each one of them has this different feel and uh, for example Spooky Pepe, I don't remember precisely but I'm pretty sure she came up from some sculptures 
uh, some some Christian sculptures that we had in reference. Like you've got a lot of uh, saints that will look like that, like they are uh, in some sort of trance, and so it will it f it felt well. And then the last um, the last um, stage of the design will be the names, and here. It was a perfect op opportunity to create some fun names that would really uh, summarize the character. Okay, so for example, well, Lupita Love. It's 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 um it's a teasing name, obviously, and you can you can feel that the love she's gonna give you will will have a lot of bullet in it. You know, so you don't want to mess with her too much, even if if she feels like a cheeky girl. Um, and uh, Cha Cha Silencia, uh, it's it's uh, you could say she's the opposite. Like she's um, she moves without a sound, and you can feel that in her pose in a way. And by the way, there is a great picture that we took when we did the War Stage Kickstarter, where you have the Cha Cha Silencia miniature on top of uh, a, a, a cathedral walkway and she just looks perfect uh, she's 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 like um some sort of scoot or some sort of assassin um and it works perfectly and so we try to name them this way uh trying to have something fun in their name like once again very tarantino-esque um, and at the same time, very encaps uh, names that would encapsulate their um, their personality. Um, okay, so I think I have answered. Oh yeah, you're asking how many change did the model go through from initial idea through draft to sculpting? Uh, I could not say uh, a lot, a lot of changes. Um, uh it's it's like uh of course it's different for for every one of them okay but uh most of the time the concepts were done pretty quickly uh we had uh, it it was a very inspiring uh unit the initial uh references that we had gathered um, made it very clear where we were heading um, but um, so most of the drawing were pretty quick to do uh, like I told you for Lupita Love, for example I completely changed the face and I know I kept the, the body movement but I changed the position of the skirt and a few other details I remember that uh, but some other were like right away from the first draft, the concepts were great. Uh, but at sculpting time, uh, we spent a lot of time on those characters uh, for various reasons. First, to really capture the pose, um, you would not believe the time we spent, we spent on poses um, and on proportions. Uh, and I think that uh, this uh, people might wonder sometimes why our miniatures are more expensive than other brands or you know things like that and the truth is that I know for a fact that we spent from three to four times more on each sculpt than any other brand on the market uh, it's it's crazy the time we spend uh, I know that because the sculpture we are working with have all worked for other companies and they are like, wow, uh, uh, they cannot believe how deep we go in trying to get the pose right, the composition right, so like the silhouette, if you will, how everything is balanced. Um, and, and then how the proportions are are going well together so it's very hard because you you need to exaggerate some things like the rosaries for example you need to make them very big um, for the the 
the miniature not to be too fragile when it is cast uh, and the guns are most of the time very big if you just look at the 3D render but then when you got the miniature uh, your perception is completely changed and the miniature that may look a bit heavy on screen will look so much thinner uh, when you have them in your hand so you have to take all that into account and so I, I think that on, on those girls uh, we had I don't know uh, they were done mostly the, the first pass was done mostly by one sculptor uh, and then we reworked everything he did like uh, I mean this is really his work at the base but we, we work so much stuff, so much stuff. Um, and when I say we, we, I think we were three sculptors reworking his, his initial sculpt and then it would go back to him again. And so it's a very lengthy process. Uh, but I think that's what make them, make the, the Raging Heroes and the Toughest Girls of the Galaxy miniature really special because we spend so much time on this, which is not reasonable. I can assure you that this is, we should not do that, but that's, that's what gives them that unique look. But it's a very costly process when you have like five sculptors working on a single project like this. Uh, it's, it's financially, it's very heavy, as you can guess. Um, and so your last question is which is your favorite daughter of the crucible this is a very tough question uh, uh, I, I could say that esperanza espinoza is my favorite because she's the one that is standing out more like she she's she looks more like a boss but i also like a lot the ones well, I mean, all of them, they all have like a different personality. And so I really like how each of them has something unique. Um, I know a lot of people like Lupita Love, which is one I like. Uh, I like Spooky Peppy because she's she's out there, you know. I, uh, I like Double Dose Mir Misericordia because she somehow looks like a ninja. You know, they, they all have something different. Cookie La Loca, she looks a bit out there too, but in a completely different way. So, I mean, they are all cool miniatures. Um, what I can tell you at this time is that we had some concepts left from uh, the work we did. Um, in TG3, in TG2, sorry, and so there is a good chance that you have more daughters in TG3. Uh, most likely, and this is really like nobody knows about that at this point in time, we will most likely make a small group of them on bikes, uh, which I think will be very cool. And we are seriously thinking about having a uh, an army just about the daughters uh, because uh, the reason for this is that uh, one of the things that will happen with the game is that you will have like infinity calls that sex sectorial armies well we will have something similar like sub factions you know because there is a lot of tension inside each faction of the TGG universe. Um, we've talked about that already in TGG1, uh, where you have the freedom fighters fighting against some sort of oppression that is happening inside their own people. And uh, there will be more stuff like that, like you will have some undead jailbirds, because what happened when there is um, an Iron Empire uh, army that fight and lose a fight and um, retreat and then there are all those people who have been those Iron Empire soldiers who have been mangled or uh, incapacitated uh, on, the, on the battlefield 
but they are not really dead because they are undead, so they don't really die. Uh, so some of them are left there and are forgotten. What happens to them? Well, a lot of them will turn into some sort of jailbird, but they will be much more dark than the regular jailbird. So, so you could say, well, uh, even if it's not completely true, that they are, they will be like evil jailbirds, if you want. So this is just an example of the kind of sub-faction armies that we will make. And this means that you will be able to give a very unique feel to your own let's say Jailbird Army or Sister Army or, or Iron Empire Army, you know, um, because there will be some specific units that um, express uh, a, 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 a specific uh, part of, let's say, the Sister's culture. And so in the case of the Daughter of the Crucible, like I told you at the beginning, the, the, those girls are uh, fr from the street and so we will keep that idea like what would be a full army of those girls who fight on the street either on a big city or somewhere in a little town in the desert where they are uh, constantly attacked by some kind of pirates or ravagers or whatever um, so what would happen how they how would they defend themselves uh, how would they build up an army? So there is plenty of things that we can do with that and we certainly want to work on it. And so you'll hear more about the Daughters of Crucible soon. Uh, and for sure they will have a central role in the uh, TGG3 Kickstarter and, and the TGG game that will happen, I think, at the end of the summer. Um, so, uh, because, um, uh, well, I cannot divulge everything yet, but um, there will be some action that is closely related to them uh, in the scenarios that we will publish at that time. So, I, if you if you like the Daughters of the Crucible, you'll be able to uh, feel them in the game, of course. But um, if you want to play the, the, the uh, narrative scenarios that we are working on, uh, they will have a great role in there. So, I hope this answers your questions. Um, um, if you already have some Daughters of the Crucible and you've painted them, please send us some photos. If you are fielding them in your game, send us some photos. We would really love, I mean, you cannot imagine. It's, it's so special for us to see them coming to life uh, on your games. Uh, in, I mean, in your games, on your tables uh, and seeing them painted and everything. This is, this is great, it's like uh, finally they are getting real for us, so please send us some stuff. Um, okay, well, that's all for today and maybe talk to you soon, bye bye.